Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and you're joining us in a very special uh, live stream for Let Us Reason. I am so excited uh, for today's live stream and the topic. Obviously, from the title itself, you know that uh, we are going to be talking about a really hot subject, and that's the topic of jihad. But obviously, Jesus is at the center of all of this. And that's really all that matters to us, uh, obviously, at the end of the day. Now, I want to uh, share with you something, uh, some special things about today's live stream. We started it one hour early, intentionally, because it's going to be two hour long. So it will be two hours. Obviously, it's recorded. If you couldn't join us for the uh, two hours, that's fine. You can always watch it later. And number two, this is a special, uh, basically, uh, premiere where we're going to have breaks. We're going to have a one-minute break almost on average every 20 minutes. We will have a one-minute break. So uh, 20 minutes from now, technically speaking, we'll have a one-minute break. Then another 20 minutes, we'll have a one-minute break. At the top of the hour, the same thing. And also, we are going to feature uh, a movie, a trailer for a movie. That's why uh, my guest is involved with that. And I will let him in a little bit talk about it. And then we will, at the end of the show, at the conclusion of the show, he will go ahead and run that trailer, which is about three minutes. And we will conclude our show with that trailer. And in addition to that, we will be showing mo uh, video clips video clips that relate to specific topics that we will be discussing. Now, with uh, with that says, uh, let me, uh, first of all, thank all of you who have been praying for us. Thank all of you who are joining us right now. I want to thank the moderators for amazing job you do. And today's job probably will be tougher than usual. We're going to have a lot of distractors. We are going to have a lot of people who are going to try to derail the topics. And just to be frank with you guys, YouTube did not like the trailer that I put in the promo. So I won't be surprised if they shut us down in the middle of the live stream. So if you are on Facebook, you should be fine because they're not going to control you over there. But you are, if you are on YouTube and something funny happens, it's not your computer. I just want to have to tell you that, you know, so be, uh, you know, mindful of these possibilities. I always like to think ahead of myself when it comes to issues like this. Now, why am I passionate about the topic of jihad? Very, for a very simple reason. I grew up a Muslim. I believed with all of my heart that there is a way for me as a Muslim, as a fundamentalist, as a devout, faithful Muslim to make it to, to paradise. All I have to do is give my life, shed my own blood for the sake of Allah whenever there is a worthy cause for this. But there wasn't anything until the end of the 70s in 1979 when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. And I felt that was my golden opportunity to go to Afghanistan and fight with the Mujahideen, the fighters for God, so that I can die as a martyr. Because that's the promise that when you die as a martyr, your sins are forgiven. There'll be no judgment for you and you receive a lot of reward. But the idea is I will survive judgment. I don't have to worry about good deeds, bad deeds, and I will go straight to paradise, the highest level ever. That was the ultimate goal. That was the ultimate goal. Because of this, I came across my brother here through Discord. We were talking and he shared with me a movie that he put together. I would I'd like to call it a documentary based on real footages of many of these young Muslim jihadis who truly believe that by blowing themselves up, by killing others, that they, when they die as a martyr, they're going straight to paradise. And that really resonated with me. That ached my heart. And I felt that people need to know about this amazing work that our dear brother here have done. And also, we need to remember to pray for those Muslims who are deceived to think this way. Because only Jesus is the answer to our hope. Only in Christ we make it to paradise. Only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And with that said, uh, it will give me the great honor and privilege to introduce to you my dear brother. We're going to call him NT. And by the way, you're never going to see NT's face. And I ask him to do it this way. You're going to see him. You're going to see someone moving. You'll see his control room. And you see his name. You see his arms, you know. But uh, <laughs> for the safety of our dear brother here, uh, I want to protect him, protect his identity. But uh, uh, NT, 
What a privilege to have you, brother. Why don't you go ahead, please, and give a quick background about just, you know, whatever you want to share, of course, and tell us why did you get involved in this uh, movie that we uh, you called, I believe, Art of Imposture. Go ahead, brother. Well, thank you, uh, El Fadi. It's my pleasure. Um, the reason why um, I put this movie together is because well, I would say about a decade ago, um, I was hearing a lot about these things called terrorism for quite a while uh, on the Muslim community. And I thought to myself, this can't be right. There's something not right here. Um, and what I did was I started investigating. I've been going on to Pal Talk and various other platforms, and I wanted to hear from the Muslims themselves what they had to say about the situation. And I gave them all the benefit of the doubt and i've heard questions that i never ever would have thought of questions that i would ever hear um pertaining to the quran and, and some of the things that just quite didn't make sense and um to my shock i was not getting coherent answers from them and i thought something's not right here something's horribly wrong here and Dealing with the Muslims that I've been dealing with with Pal Talk for over the years, I ran into a lot of guys there um, that helped me along my journey on understanding what was going on here. Um, and it captivated me simply because all the years that I've been studying on things of like mind control and how to get someone motivated to do something against their will, this Islam kind of went under the radar to me. And I was a little angry <laughs> because... From what I gathered and in, in, in over the years, an understanding from their own sources, from inside the Al Hayat Media Center in Iraq and in Sham, I was dumbfounded that they kept it secret from even me. I'm on the internet. I'm a software developer. I go everywhere on the internet and a lot of places people are not privy on getting to. And this still went under my radar. And, and it was so shocking to me because of the material and what was actually happening. The rest of the world, I had no idea. And I thought something has to be done. Over the years, learning and, and, and actually trying to warn re the rest of the people of the world what was happening here, I was getting a lot of blowback for it. I was called racist, Islamophobe. I'm sure you've heard all the names I'm talking about. And I thought to myself, what would be a good way to educate people on this particular subject? And I've asked people, I said, what is your best way of bringing this subject to light to those who have no idea? I'm, I'm speaking even on the, 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 the context of a non-believer or a non-Muslim, like your next door neighbor or your coworker or even a family member. And I asked people outright, what was your best way of bringing this information to them? Nobody had a good answer. No one. There was no real definitive good answer that was a success. Well, one day, well, let me just back up a little bit. When I started investigating into this and getting into the uh, Islamic State's media center and all of the, the propaganda stuff that they were putting out, the stuff was shocking me to my core. I would sit here day in and day out reviewing the material, sitting here crying with tears. And I thought to myself, the world needs to know about this. They've been sheltered from it and they've been lied to about it. And I've always had that question on my mind, how do I wake somebody up to it? Well, I had uh, an, another, a friend of mine that used to share this office with me and he had some unexpected guests come by one day. And one day we were reviewing the material and they just came in, they stopped in their tracks, their jaws hit the ground and they said, what am I reviewing on your screens? And it was such a shock to them that it, they actually wanted to become involved. And then the light bulb went out in my head. Ah, that's how you do it. You have to just give them the raw, uncut material. The shock factor will do it. And that's what it's been ever since. So that gave me the inspiration to actually do the film. Now, the film is a three-hour long film. I, I understand it's quite a, lo a lengthy film to watch but because of literally thousands and upon thousands and upon thousands of hours of material i have i can only put so much into a movie right um so i did my best um and knowing the material over the years dealing with islam and, and learning the material you know either through like um, sam shimon um, david wood um 
Christian Prince, and even Usama Dak Duck, um, I thought to myself, I would need a narrator for this film. And I thought of all of the, the people who do the polemics. And to be honest with you, the theology is all there, but they just didn't have the voice for it, especially to narrate a film. And so I came across a lot of Usama's work, and I thought to myself, he's perfect. I thought that any lecture or anything that Usama Dakdok would talk about, I can actually back him up with the visuals, what he's already spoken about. And so what I did was I took one of his lectures by his permission. I contacted him. I told him about the project. He gave us his full permission to do it and blessings. And what I did was I actually gave visuals to a narration that he did on a seminar that he did back. And I want to say it was in, I want to, it's quite older. It's, I want to say it's in 2015, maybe. And that's what, what did it. He had the passion on what was, what he was saying. He, 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 he he really described without pulling any punches. Um, and he was passionate about it. And I thought, you're going to want to see a film that's passionate, that's exciting, because these things look like Star Wars. Look, guys, George Lucas got it right with Star Wars. You know, with all the laser blasts and everything, it actually looks like that in real war, the same color and everything. You would not believe it. It really does look. So I'm just saying, George Lucas knew something. Um, the passionate b behind what, what Usama Dakdok was, was on his lectures, what he was saying, the visuals all come together. It makes it compelling. But I have to warn you, the material is extremely, extremely disturbing. What I've done is I have done my best to at least blur out or pixelate all of the most violent things for your viewing. I had to endure watching these things and i thought to myself if these children in this video can deal with this stuff in their world i have to deal with it and i've spared the viewer the gore the actual violence in that aspect but what i want you to see is the people are in who are the people are involved in this from the ages from little to tall, big and small, all shapes and sizes and colors. That's the part that I need you to focus on because you never know. I want to get rid of the stigma that the people that you think are doing this violent uh, uh, jihad, as they call it, are not just some people locked into a cave somewhere that nobody knows about and nobody's ever heard of. This, um, this lie will 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 uh, be uh, demolished now the other reason why i did this movie is i need you guys those people that you bring information about islam to that tell you that you're islamophobe or you're a bigot or you're a racist which islam's not a race all of these objections that you get from your own loved ones from your family members from your co-workers from your friends from people who your neighbors, these people want to say, it's much easier to say that you're a bigot than to actually deal with the harsh reality. Now, because this movie was released, all you have to say to your neighbor or your coworker or your friend or your family member, here, here's a documentary. If you have time, watch it. Get back to me. Tell me your thoughts. Amen. 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 And thanks, A&T, for this wonderful introduction, because we will be talking uh, more and more about parts of your uh, uh, movie. And uh, as I said, I was really blown away by some of the stuff that I saw, the quality and everything else. And I pray that this will be a blessing, of course, to you and uh, to the people. I know yeah, we did share the links with uh, some of our moderators. Hopefully, if they still have it, they can periodically put it uh, yep. in a yep. chat. If not, we will make sure we get it there uh, before the end of the show as well. Yes, I see it already. NT Authority uh, BitChute account. You wonder why it's at BitChute account? Because YouTube will take it down. <laughs> That's simply why. Yeah, if somebody I, is I wondering a, about um, that. Yeah, I had a few trailers up on my uh, YouTube account, and they took it down. So I said, okay. I made sure that the trailers were clean and they were they would abide by the uh, YouTube guidelines. And they took it down. I appealed it. They put it back up. The next day, they took it down. I appealed it. They put it yeah. back up. This happened 14 times. And I thought to myself, let me challenge them. And I said to them, if it truly is against your guidelines, then why do you keep reinstating it on my appeal? 
Then after that, they deleted my channel. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it because when when we did the promo, brother, that you did yeah. for me, twenty nine seconds, I put it in there. Just the promo for this show, they took it down. Yeah, it was very frustrating, and I have to appeal the promo, and they put it back up. But that gave me the hint already about what yep. to expect today. So right. here, here's what's going to happen. I want to give people quick backgrounds from the scripture, and also I'm going to read a few things from the Quran as well. Um, let me let me tell people who are watching right now there is there is a number of reasons why Jesus is the answer for instance the Bible says in Galatians 3 13 Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law translation in Islamic way of thinking the law is do 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 right Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Our Lord Jesus Christ went to the tree, went to the cross to hang so that you and I have the freedom of being liberated from do, 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 do. Why do we want to do? And in this case, in the case of jihad, to do it, to go to heaven. Here is another fabulous verse in 1 John 4.10. It says, in this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins, to appease the judgment of God. There is a judgment that awaits us. The jihadis get it right when they think about the judgment, but they get it wrong in how they ought to make it to paradise. Let me share a few passages from the Quran, folks. It is what the Quran say, th says and teaches about jihads. For instance, it says, sanction, permission, approval is given unto those who fight because they have been wronged. Now, what does it that what does it mean to be wrong? All door is open for interpretation. They, everybody can give you their own opinion about what does it look like that you're wrong. Some will say that's historical. It only back then they were wrong. Some will say, no, 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 we are wrong right now. Why? Because we want to have a mosque and we want to have loudspeaker to say the prayer calling, and they told us no, we're wrong. Some will say, well, we cannot have our Islamic Sharia law court. We're wrong. We cannot implement our own teachings wherever we live in Europe or in North America. So we're wrong. You see what I mean? It's open for interpretation. Here is another passage. But if they desist, then Allah is forgiven, merciful. Desist from what? Desist from the wrong teaching. Desist from what? Desist from teaching the Trinity. Desist from teaching things aside from Islam. That's amazing. Where is freedom of religion, folks? Right. Here is another passage that you will find about jihad in the Quran. The benefit of why some of these youngsters want to do what they want to do. All you who believe, and I want to emphasize something, and I think you and I in T after the break will talk about it. Notice the Quran distinguished between Muslims in general and those who do jihad that they're believers. Believers, right? right? Yep. All you who believe, shall I show you a commerce? that will save you from a painful doom. It's a very interesting thing because after the break, folks, when we take our first break, me and NT will talk about what does it mean to engage in jihad? It's like a negotiation. There is a contract, there is a give and take between right. you and the God supposedly that you are worshiping. With that says, uh, NT, uh, I think we're approaching our first break, but let's give people a glimpse of what might happen right after that. We're going to talk about this contract, this covenant between Allah and the jihadis. Yep. And we're going to talk about what is the real benefit, why the jihadis want to do what they want to do, because there is some things that are prompting them to be willing to sacrifice even their life for the sake of avoiding these things. And then we will show one clip that will coincide with this. With that says, folks, we're going to take our first one minute break. Don't go anywhere, but you're going to see just the logo in the screen. Intentionally, we want to take these breaks because it's a long two hour live stream and we want to give people a break every now and then. Let's uh, go basically to our first break, one minute break, and we will be back immediately. Get your copies, guys.
All right, guys, uh, we're back again. And uh, in 20 minutes from now, we're going to take another break. And I hopefully you're going to enjoy uh, this new approach that we're taking for such a long live stream. Hey, by the way, NT, I saw a comment saying that NT will become famous. Bro, we are honored if that's what's going to happen. I want you to become famous uh, even from before knowing me. Your, the work that you have done is amazing. By the way, Inti, yeah. I, I take issue with you that you said, uh, you know, uh, Usama Duck Duck was perfect. I thought I was perfect, but apparently I wasn't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me let, let me let me let me qualify that. Have you ever seen his lectures? He's screaming at people. He's telling you, listen, listen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, love that. I love uh, that about it. By the way, folks, hey, guys, I'm going to have Osama with me uh, in a couple of weeks from now. He and I are planning to do a number of uh, video series as well. Go ahead, brother. You wanted to say something. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead. Good. Um, I'll, no, it's just, we need to, like whenever you're ready. Um, OK, like so we. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, the reason why people do jihad, uh, brother, there is an element of, by the way, psychology to it. There is an element of mind control. Could you elaborate a little bit more on this? Okay. Well, when I was in, when I was studying how the mind works and in mind control and getting people to actually eat their aged parents and eat them in the stew, that's an actual quote, by the way. It's not Islamic, but it goes back from my other studies on mind control. People are, can be made to do absolutely anything against their will. They really can, and they won't even know it. It's absolutely amazing what the mind can do and how it can be manipulated by those who do not have our best interest at heart. With that being said, and like I said, this whole uh, subject of, uh, of, of Islam going under the radar, radar for me was kind of bothered me because it's pretty intense, to say the least. As I studied the Quran, and I've read the entire Quran twice in its entirety. It's not really a big book. I'm, I'm I mean, sorry guys, to hear this. I'm sorry to hear this. Yeah. Auntie, you know. <laughs> when I when I read it, it's not really a big read. You can read it in one day. If you it really is not a big. If you read it, especially if you go from 114 to the middle, you'll be halfway done through it within two hours. I promise you. Just because the verses are three verses, four verses, three verses, four verses, it's really not long of big of a book. Chapter two is the biggest one, of course. But I wanted to understand what was the psychology even in the book. Number one, I've noticed that there's three personalities in the Quran that's speaking. But regardless, what's happening here is this book seems to be trying to motivate an individual from his soul, from his God-given soul, what makes a human being a human being. And I thought to myself, wow, we can sit here, especially in the West, and compare certain verses and see certain things like contradictions, fallacies, and things that don't make sense. What amazes me is when it comes to the quote-unquote believers, and I've talked to them in Pal Talk, they tell me they don't care if it is a contradiction, or they don't care if it's even false, they still believe it. And I thought to myself, whoa, what kind of mind am I dealing with when somebody says, look, I don't even care about truth. I'm still willing to do this, even if it is false. That kind of that's quite shocking to hear from a human being saying that to you. Now, I get it. There are people on the planet that don't really want truth in their life or even are on the pursuit of truth. They want to do their own thing. Right. They don't want God interfering in their moral values. I get it. There, there are people like that. But this is far and for beyond that. These are people telling me straight to my face and T, I don't care if, if there's contradictions. I don't care if there's fallacies, illogical things. They even told me that a square circle is a real thing, a contradiction, because Allah cannot be known in any attribute. Even though he has 99 names that are in the attribute field of reality, it's okay. Square circles are a real thing, according to Allah. They accept that as an actual truth. And the implications of accepting something as, as crazy as that will lead to exactly what's happening with this jihad. These people are told throughout the entire Quran, if you do not do my bidding, this chastisement of punishment will be bestowed on you for all eternity. From the punishment of the grave all the way to Jahannam, which is forever. And Allah, all he does is describe about boiling metallic liquid uh, poured down your face for all eternity. All eternity. 
um, these kind of descriptions throughout the Quran would make someone who is a believer in Allah very fearful. He's reading this and he's saying, I don't want no part of this for me or any of my loved ones. Allah is going to do this to me. What is he? He doesn't give me a break here. I have to do what is ordained for me by his words in this Quran because I believe that this Quran is the truth, number one. And number two, because they've lived in that environment for so long, that's when they say to you, it has to be the truth, even if it is false. In other words, when it comes to this the fitna, I understand that there's a principle to be made here. We understand it here as Christians when we read the fitna, they call it sedition or corruption, right? The Muslims will say it's it, it's, it's persecution or oppression. Well, you know what? Since this sh topic is about psychology in jihad, let's look at the psychology of this. Let's take the Quran as a whole. You don't even really have to read the whole Quran. You can just get the gists of it and you'll fall into that psychology. Absolutely. So There's about 164 verses that command jihad in the Quran. So that can brainwash you so quickly. Right. But when it comes to the concept of fitna, like in 839, they're talking about, listen, if you get out of line or steer away from any truth that's in this book, you are causing the sedition. In other words, the kafir or the non-believer or the people who do not live in Islamic countries, number one, guys, you do not suffer from the fitna. Only the believers in Muslims suffer from the fitna. You don't, because it's like this. If you're talking to a Muslim on the other side and you're giving him a contradiction or you're giving him a fallacy or even if you're giving him the gospel, what he's thinking is, why do you want to hurt me? And you say, I don't want to hurt you. I, I love you. I, this is why I give me giving you the gospel. He says, no, 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 no. You want to harm me. What he's actually saying to you is because of this sedition called the gospel or the truth of the gospel, you, he would be... Uh, steering away from al-haq, which is the truth in Islam, their truth, and you'll be putting them in a situation, because guess what, guys? While you're sitting there in the safety of your own home talking about Jesus Christ, all of a sudden their father or brother are walking by will hear what's going on. Oh, no, 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 no. And now he is put in jeopardy. And therefore the, the, the Muslim will say, why are you putting me in this situation? Why do yeah. you want to harm me? So, NT, uh, I want to address yeah. just one quick uh, comment, and I want to make uh, a couple of uh, uh, quick uh, backgrounds behind talking about uh, verse 9, verse 111. Uh, there is yep. a gentleman here by the name, uh, gentleman or lady, the name uh, Aqib Aqil, saying, are you criticizing punishment of the grave? What about you Christians believe in punishment in purgatory? Why be so hypocrite? Well, I have to tell you, Aqib, you're the hypocrite here if you want me to be straightforward with you. You know why you're a hypocrite? Because you don't have a clue what the Bible teaches. I don't know where you get this dumb idea about purgatory. purgatory. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Go on, yep. find it for me in the Bible that we believe in. So don't be coming here criticizing us because you know what? I'll throw you out of here before you blink an eye. So you come here, be respectful to everyone in here. Hopefully understood. All right, brother. Let's go now to... Um, what uh, the topic is concerning the mind control. You mentioned, it's kind of interesting, you mentioned chapter 8, verse 39, which is in the same context of chapter 8, the same chapter, verse 23, yep. that teaches about taqiyya, taqiyya, basically, to right. cover your intent out of fear of retaliation against you until, basically, the Quran teaches you are superior now, right. and you can go ahead and wage war, and Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, says war is deceit. War is the seed. Now, let's talk about the concept of covenant as it is in the Shahada. And by the way, we still have about eight oh, minutes yeah. before our next break. The Shahada and the concept of covenants, meaning making a deal with the God of Islam once you confess Islam by the way of the Shahada. Go right. ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I want people to understand when you take a Shahada, Sharia, which means law in, in, in Arabic, you are actually making an oral contract. Now, let me ask you a question. Are contracts binding? Yes. Even if it is not written on paper and it's an oral contract. If there are witnesses, that contract is binding by penalty of perjury in any law. Not just U.S. law, but even the Sharia. So when you take your Shahada, you are actually making a declaration oath. You are making a contract on that oath. At this point, when you've taken Shahada, 
You already understand that a Muslim is quote unquote one who surrenders. They'll say it means submission, but you understand it means surrender. What are you surrendering? You're surrendering your mind, your wants, your desires, and even your needs. Everything is owned by Allah at this point. He owns you. You are his property. This is why it is called apostasy, punishable by death if you leave Islam, simply because you're stealing from God. Well, not really God, but Allah. You made a contract with him. The contract in the fine print says you cannot leave. If you do, you are stealing. What is the punishment of stealing in 533? Your hands and feet be cut off on opposite sides or crucified. That's in the Quran. So if that's if if you're being punished for stealing an egg. Oh, and by the way, theft in theft in Sharia, there is no difference in punishment in theft, whether you steal an egg or a thousand dollars. It's the same punishment. Think about the implications there. That's why the, 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 the believers will say to you, look at our, our country, look at our state. Nobody would dare steal from anybody. That's right, because they'll cut off your hands on opposite sides. Oh, and by the way, whoever you're stealing from gets the choice whether you get your hands cut off on opposite sides, hands and feet, or crucified. It's at their discretion. Right. And let me read something from the Quran along the lines of the idea that there is a expectation that you would fight because Allah is giving you permission to do so. For instance, I mean, I want to uh, give people the crash course on the doctrine of jihad. There are different views on how it progressed in the Quran, but I'm going to tell you that there is at least four stages. First, it was no retaliation. Why? Because during the weakness and the phase when Muhammad didn't have a whole lot of people with him, that was during the Meccan phase, the first 13 years. But even then, when Muhammad declared himself to be a warner, I assure you that even in the warning, there was embedded uh, at least a warning that physical jihad and physical punishment is going to take place when the time is right. I wrote an article on this on answer-islam.org under Al-Fadi. You'll see that I wrote about it, the fact that was Islam really teaching peace or was it just a phase? Then in the second phase, after Muhammad moved to Medina, it became like there is permission now to defend yourself. And then in phase three, not only fight to defend yourself, but now fight those who attacked you. And then we get to four, phase four, the final one, fighting now prescribed, open-ended, right. technically but, speaking. But here, Go ahead. here's the thing. Fighting with them, is it could be anything. It could be actually arguing with them about their deen or quote-unquote religion. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, Chap the idea Chap of fighting. Chapter 60, chapter 60 yeah. verse 2 is clear when it says they fight you with their hands and their tongues. So when you're causing fitna for them, you're fighting them with their tongues, with your tongues. Right. And I want to show here that it's really not up to our Muslim friends to decide whether they want to fight or not. Their God expects him, expects him to fight. We find this, for instance, in chapter 2, chapter 2, verses 216 and 217. And I'm going to just read a small portion. Fighting is prescribed for you and you yep. dislike it. But yep. it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you notice so the god of islam is telling you it's not up to you really to decide whether you like it or not he doesn't care for that he's telling you what you think that is not good and i tell you it's kind of funny by the way nt doesn't it show that the people actually even at the time of muhammad were disturbed about the idea of killing people and attacking yeah. people and fighting people because from an emotional humanistic right. standpoint and somehow their god is telling them no 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 you're doing the right thing Basically. Absolutely. And I believe that is because when Jesus says to even those people who do not believe, he says, look, the law is still written on your hearts. You have no excuse. So that means them, too. Look, I don't see I don't really want to see people going out there saying, I just want to kill. I can see people saying, wait a minute, something inherently in me tells me I feel that there's something wrong here. And they uh, what they'll do is they'll take that. They'll take the propaganda of the West being their enemy and persecuting their women because, oh, by the way, guys, in El Hayat Media Center and all the propagation that, the I'm sorry, the, the propaganda that they put out to the believers is that they tell them that we're beating and pillaging and raping their women. That's what they keep saying. Now, guys, are, is that happening in the West? Are we taking uh, uh, the, the, female, the female Muslims and doing all this to them? Where? 
Where is it happening? It's not. But they're telling those believers in Iraq and Sham and various places that that's what's happening, and it's enraging them. They're like, we want revenge for our sisters. It's not happening, guys. It's not happening, folks. But they believe it because they control every aspect of television, media, radio, audio, everything. You already know they're in control of what the heteronymous culture of what they eat, what they drink, what they wear, how they pray. Everything is controlled. That means there is no exception even in what they get for information around the world. It's all filtered. You think China is bad with with uh, censorship? They're the just as bad, and only they are the ones that are in control of what kind of media is portrayed to their people. And they're told that we are doing an atrocious thing to their women, and it's not true. So it's enraging them. Absolutely. And, and it's kind of like interesting, brother. People need to understand that it's not up to your Muslim neighbor because sometimes you feel like your neighbor is a wonderful person. I'm sure my family is wonderful, by the way. A lot of my cousins and friends are wonderful, but it's not up to them to decide what is uh, what to do and not to do. And that's why it's at the end of the day, it boils down to what the book they believe in will tell them. And that's why people like, you know, the radical, uh, you know, uh, uh, frac factions and wings of Islam always get upset with the so-called hypocrite Muslims who are not willing to do something. And yeah, I'm not endorsing... Yeah, I'm not endorsing the fact that those Muslims who are peaceful have to do something, but I'm saying they are too end up being victims of these kind of things in the first place. Now, Absolutely. brother, uh, some people, uh, of course, uh, as I expected, you know, they're commenting on, uh, "Are you in a control room?" And I like to tell him that he is in <laughs> charge of flight of flight operations. So every now and then he'll be landing some some flights right now at airports. So don't worry, we got it all under control, folks. So uh, this is brother, uh, just for the record. For the record, this is my man cave. Yep, it is. <laughs> it looks like a, a, a perfect cave. Uh, <laughs> we have one more minute before we take our break. I want to give people a teaser of what's going to happen when we come back uh, at the other side of the break. One minute break. When we come back, we're going to talk about chapter nine, verse one eleven. Uh, yep. Me and NT, we're going to unpack it for you, and then we're going to show a small video clip about five and a half minutes, and hopefully, uh, the fun, the real fun, will begin. Yes, folks. Um, yeah, just wait till you see what I got in store for you. All right, brother. So why don't we go ahead and take the one minute break right now? All right. Okay, everybody, go ahead and enjoy your coffee or tea or take a one minute break, take one minute nap, whatever you want to do. All right, folks, we are back uh, after our one minute break and hope that you are enjoying this special uh, uh, Let Us Reason edition. Uh, I'm hoping that we will continue to do more and more of these things. And I'm so thankful for my brother and the quality, the high quality of his work. Uh, this is today a teaser of the stuff that he does. And this logo, by the way, is the work of his uh, hands. So I'm so thankful for my dear brother and we're going to be collaborating more and more together here. Now, NT, let's talk about uh, the real, basically, purchase agreement that was done between the right. God of Islam and the jihadis. And that's chapter right. 9, verse 111. Let me go ahead and read the, right. the verse first for people to yep. hear it and then we'll unpack yep. it. 
here is what chapter 9 verse 111 and by the way chapter 9 of the Quran is extremely important why because it was the last to be revealed before the death of Muhammad when you use abrogation and the doctrine of abrogation it applies basically in terms of canceling other things that came before it chapter Correct. 9 verse 5 known as the uh, uh, verse of the sword, the, sword. the sword verse yep. single-handedly yep. canceled up to 124 peaceful verses including no compulsion in uh, no compulsion in religion which is chapter 2 verse 256 that you hear many muslims yep. tell you oh islam is has a freedom of religion wrong don't believe a word of it because it's yep. been canceled technically yep. speaking in chapter 9 verse 111 reads surely allah has purchased from the believers who are the believers the one who become basically mujahideen jihadis right purchased right. from the believers their souls and their money so that they may have the garden the and garden, their lives what paradise their, li their they lives engage in war for the sake of allah so they kill and are killed a promise of this is true in the torah and in the gospel and in the quran i can assure you it's a lie to say that the torah and the gospel teach jihad right. and who is more faithful to his covenant notice the use of covenant here yep. than allah so receive the good news in your pledge which you have pledged with and this is the great triumph this is the great victory nt over yep. to you my friend okay i also want to get rid of the stigma because i want you guys to think about what's happening here el fadi forgot to say in your life your money your wealth in your life in allah I, 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 I just Menina. i just corrupted the quran right. bro that's all <laughs> <laughs> right so it's your life he's purchasing your life now here's the reason why he did this remember when i talked about the punishments in the quran if you don't do what is ordained for you did you notice that there's no way around it? Did you notice that even believers get punishment of the grave? Even many believers go to Jahannam? How do you get out of this? Well, Allah says, here's one deal. You can get out of it. It's a contract that between me and you. Hey, covenant, it's a contract. And this is the contract. You, uh, you kill others who fight against Islam and yourself are killed. That way, on the day of Yom Kiyama, you get to show your hands and wounds at what you have suffered for Allah. That's the idea. Now, with that being said, think of the verse number, chapter 9, verse 111. That's 911 with an extra 1. Does that sound familiar, guys? Does it make sense why 19 hijackers would take a plane and kill others and themselves? for the gardens of paradise and what it is it's the avoidance of all eternity hellfire and punishment of the grave it's the only way out it's a sure contract so when people say that they do it for 72 virgins and they do it for the mil land of milk and honey no the motivation is fear with that said right. i'm going to give you a clip right from the documentary that expounds on this now i implore you to go watch documentary because there's a lot more to the 9111 uh verse but uh without further ado um here we go so, so the clip, the clip, is, clip five is five minutes, minutes. yep the almighty lord mentions translated allah has purchased it's like a bargain here he's trading with his servants the almighty lord and subhanAllah, what a fair trade this will be. What a fair trade. The all just is trading with his servants. You can never have a better bargain ever than this. Allah has purchased of, their believe, of the believers their souls and their lives, their properties, for the price, in other words, this is the price, this is the trade, this is the exchange. For the price that there shall be paradise. Who are these people? They fight in his cause. They kill others, the enemies who fight Islam. And they themselves are killed. 
as martyrs. أعظم عقد سويته في حياتك الآية الكريمة إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة أركان العقد. المشتري الله عز وجل البايع العبد الفقير لا يملك شيئا نفسه وماله البضاعة المعروضة النفس والمال الثمن الجنة اشترى من كمالك ونفسك تكمل الآية يقاتلون في سبيل الله هذا هو تنفيذ العقد يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا عليه حقا هذا الاعلان اعلان الشراء منذ متى منذ عهد موسى عليه السلام وعدا عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن ومن أوفى بعهده من الله فإذا لا تفكر بالجزاء الجزاء مضمون And there it you go. So sad. It is so sad, brother. It brings tears to my eye to see these youngsters happy, celebrating, thinking they are truly going to paradise. What a real shame, brother. What a real shame. Yep. And you wouldn't believe there are literally, I have thousands upon thousands of videos of different people doing the exact same thing. You would not believe the magnitude of how many people are actually doing this. I, one video has like 15 of them doing it. It's that yeah. many. It's not just one or two guys here and there. There's a lot of them. And they're all, a lot of them are young. I've seen them as young as as long as they can reach the pedal. Maybe about 12 years old. I'll show it to you all funny one right. day. 12 right. years right. old. As long as he can reach the pedal, he's happy to do it. Absolutely. And I remember I uh, one time Brother Rashid uh, gave me also a documentary that he did on Jihad for two hours. And in there, there was uh, 
a number of soon to be martyrs sitting down and reminiscing yeah. about meeting with the Hodes, the virgins yeah. in heaven. Yeah. And I'm like, my goodness, man, is this why you want to die? I want to be with my Lord, absence from the body, presence with the Lord, and they want to be presence with virgins in heaven, which is a figment of their imagination. What a real sad uh, brother. So brother, let's talk about this purchase, which uh, this, uh, you know, the document, uh, the, the clip emphasize, there is right. a contract and the gentleman, yeah. the yeah. older gentleman yeah. at the beginning says the fulfillment of the contract is dying for yep. that deal. That's yep. the fulfillment. Basically. You solidify it. You solidify it. Yep. It's, it's right. written in stone at that point. But here's the point. He's saying that, look, who is more truthful to this covenant than Allah? Who do you who do you know is going to be more truthful to it? And then technically, if you really believe Allah is God, then nobody. Right. So you have to trust it. It's a guarantee. So, again, think about the implications here when they go and they they kill others, because what the idea is, is they're trying to get the shrapnel to kill their enemies. So you, you kill enemies with shrapnel and you kill yourself. But after they're gone and they're done, who's left? The women and the children, your, your wife, your children, your family members are left, right? So what does Allah in the Quran say about it? He says, nay, don't think those who have, who have sacrificed themselves in the cause of Allah dead, but they are alive. They're not dead, they're alive, receiving right. Their provision from their Lord. That's what it says. So it even tries to give comfort to the loved ones that he left behind, women you know, like his their his wife or wives, uh, their children, and family members. So it tries to rest assure them at the same time. Isn't this book pretty uh, mind boggling and mind deceptive and and mind manipulative? I mean, really. I mean, it seems to like it wants to cover all the bases of the human psyche just to get you to do something that would be against your better judgment. Right. And NT, you know, uh, if, if we want to kind of like give an idea at least of what's going on, there is this idea that if I fulfill my end of the bargain with Allah, uh, yep. I am, I am afraid if I don't do this. So I want to skip fear. Basically, yep. I yep. don't want to be accused of being a mushrik or kafir or a weak person. I want right. to have my sins forgiven. I want to have that assurance. Right. I want to skip the punishment of the grave, right? Because you're going yep. straight up, you know? And yeah. I want to also skip the idea of being punished on judgment day altogether. And what would, was the cause for, for me? Shed my own blood. Jesus shed his blood right. for them, and they just didn't know it, sadly. And they want to shed their own blood. Yeah. What it's a, it's a real tragedy! It's a type, of, tragedy. What it's a a type tragedy. of blood. It's a type of blood atonement, right? Right. Exactly. In that way, exactly. it's a perversion of that, actually. Right. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's exactly what goes on here when it comes to this. And um, and what I want to say, brother, is that um, you know. Uh, I can understand and relate to what these guys are saying or doing because one day. One day growing up, I wanted to do exactly similar things. So it breaks my heart because when I discovered Christ, when I discovered that freedom in Jesus, I said, thank you, Lord, because I would have yep. wasted my life for nothing. Mm -hmm. And today you have given me hope. You have given me that living hope. You have given me eternal life so that I can go and share it with these youngsters. My hope and my prayer is that a lot of you Muslims watching or will be watching this to heed this warning. God has done it for you. God has done it for you. He canceled your legal demands. He canceled your legal requirements. Colossians 2, 13 says, and you who were dead in your trespasses, you're dead in your sins. God made alive together with him, with Christ, having forgiven us all our trespasses, all our sins by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus, that's what my Lord has done for you. You do not have to sacrifice your life. Right. You do not have to shed your blood. He did it for you. Right.
brother uh, obviously we have a couple of more clips but we are approaching yeah. our next uh basically break this time we're going to take a two minute break folks but uh tell us uh, give us a teaser about the video the movie the the the, the movie that you have done because we want to show a trailer towards the end we still have a couple of minutes before the break give people an idea about what is the three hours going to entail well it's going to be bouncing back and forth between biblical verses and Quran verses. It's going to show you a major contrast in the philosophy, in the idea of the psychology behind both books. One is going to be dealing with love, and the other one is going to be dealing with what they're trying to tell you love is. That's the difference. Remember, Jesus says, love your enemies. This concept does not exist in Islam. It does not exist in the Quran. Look, when they say to you, to your religion is your religion and my religion is my religion, or there's no compulsion religion, or these kind of things, there is no example. Where's the example? Towards love, towards a disbeliever. It's not there. Jesus says, love not only your neighbor, but your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Remember, the key words, when we talk about things like righteousness, in justice, in freedom. You want that. I want that. El Fadi wants that. But their definition of freedom means freedom from your Christianity, your Judaism, your atheism, your polytheism, your democracies, and only Sharia. That's what they mean. When they say justice, they mean Islamic justice. When they want righteousness, you want righteousness, they want it too. But it's very different. Um, values according to these words because they use the same words as you and me in a discussion they're hoping that they're deceiving you by using these words they say yeah we love you when we show you love in the quran and they will never show it to you but what they will do is either dance around it or they'll actually give you a mercy verse meaning get rid of you today because that's your blood atonement that's why you have verses of the sword. That's why you have these subjugating verses to do these violent things to you. It's because you're atoning for your blood, and that's a mercy, and that's love. But what al is asking, what can you find in this movie? You're going to find biblical verses, and you're going to find Quran verses that are going to coincide when you put them together. And notice that they contradict in the philosophy. One says... Thou shall not steal. It will give you all the verses of where you're not supposed to steal in the Bible. And here's all the verses that it's okay to steal from non-believers. You can't steal from believers. That's a sin. Theft, you'll get your hands and feet cut off. But it's okay to steal from a Kafir. That's very different. You understand the language that's being said here. And you'll see Amen. that in the movie. Yep. Amen. So you see why I like NT. He gets so excited, so excited. Uh, when when he and I were preparing for this, I'm like, man, he's going to take off on me and I won't be able to hold him back. Yeah. Praise <laughs> the Lord for my brother. So let's I'm, I'm watching the time. I'm watching the time. Here. Let's take two minute break this time. Two minute break. Uh, guys, you can take a two minute nap if you want. These are power naps. Two minute break. <laughs>
All right, folks, uh, we are back again from our two minute break and in the next 20 minutes, we'll take another minute break and we will be having more of these clips to talk about. I wanna go back and address Aqib Aqil. You said, Marcos, thanks for being honest. And Marcos told you that the churches in Europe have blood on their hand. Let me clarify what Marcos meant if Marcos meant it that way. Marcos is saying that the history of the church did dumb things that Jesus didn't order or command and mentioned that to you. There is no single scripture that said we ought to go burn people, burn churches, or fight anyone. These are not believers. No believer in Christ, by the way, Akib, does what these people did. I don't care what they call themselves. They call themselves church, pope, whatever. We don't care for that. What matters to me is what Jesus taught. So, Knock it down and stop going back to these issues because I am this short of blocking you. So I'm going to have to tell you, if you're here to just distract with things that you don't know what you're talking about, I'm telling you, this is not the site for you. Maybe you're used to doing things on other sites, but here I clean house almost instantaneously. So this is the final warning, my friend. Either listen and learn or you are going to be blocked. Thank you. Go ahead, NT. There you go. Yeah, and I want to expound on that a little bit, too. I like to ask people, look, give me an example, something either Jesus said or did that you disagree with. Let's talk about it. And in all scenarios, I've only come on to three scenarios. Either A, someone lied to me about a verse that they have a problem with, or it was out of context, or it wasn't even completely there. For instance, somebody said to me, okay, here's the problem I get. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Well, you know what? When you read it and you find out what's going on there, he's actually talking about revenge. Let's look at that for a moment. What would be, in the Quran, everything is revenge, 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 revenge. Even when things that didn't happen, they just say it's revenge. It's like a way of looking for an excuse to attack somebody. I want revenge on you because you oppressed me. What's oppression? Oh, you won't let me um, practice my Islam. Uh, that's oppression. You know, in, in turn, you, they need to defend themselves, right? Alhamdulillah, dude, that's, that's how it works. Jesus says, no, I don't even want you doing revenge on people. You can have self-defense. I mean, the apostles carried swords. You can have self-defense. Everybody has that right for self-defense. But think of the implication what Jesus said when he says, turn the other cheek. He's talking about revenge. Did you know if somebody does you wrong, like say your neighbor does something wrong and you have anger for your neighbor because he did something wrong and you want revenge, how do you put that war to rest? You can't. You go revenge. He wants to revenge back to you. You feel... Uh, that you have the right to revenge back, and it's an ongoing non-stop. It will never, the war will never cease. Cease. Jesus says, here's a solution. Don't even go there. It's right. revenge. Revenge yeah. is mine, he says. Right? Amen, yeah. amen. And uh, I want to address another comment. Uh, Juliet Abraham, I know exactly what purgatory is. And you know why I am not trying to address the Catholic doctrines of this? Because that's exactly what this babbler who's here wants you to do. He wants you to distract and move away from the topic that we're doing so you can start talking about the punishment of the grave and purgatory. You see, I know yeah. their game, and I don't want to play these games. So I kindly ask you, let, uh, you know, let it go, and don't worry about it. We know where purgatory is. Thank you so much. Hey, brother, yeah. so what is it that they are trying to fee uh, what, what is it that they're trying to gain when they want to blow themselves up, when they want to go and die? I mean, of course, I know the answer, but I want your perspective on this, you know, because you've watched uh, many of these clips. You know what they're saying. We want to share with people, why is it that these youngsters who have a life ahead of them are yeah. willing to do what they do? Fear of what? What are they afraid of, for instance? Well, if you, if you watch how the imams and the sheikhs do it over there, all they do is preach about this life being a test. And it's a temporary place. You live short. You sleep half your life away when you're sleeping. This place is not the time. That's how they describe it. They say, you're only put here to test to see if you're worthy. If you pass the test, you'll be there, inshallah. Isn't that what they say? But if right. you're not going to pass the test, you're going to be with the people that are with you right now. Who are they? Who are you with you right now? The Mushirikin, the Kufar. That's what they as a matter of fact, I got a clip ready for that particular topic. Um, do you want to uh show that particular piece? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Here, guys, you're gonna hear it from his their own mouths. Why? 
and you're going to I want you to notice the environment he's in. He's in actually in a vehicle that has bombs to blow up. Army people call it the VBID. It stands V B I E D. It stands for a vehicle improvised explosive device. That's another name for car bomb in the military. But that's what they're in. They load these vehicles full of bombs and that's how they explode and there's a trigger on the dashboard. I just want you to notice where he's in while he's speaking. So uh, here we go. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallim wa tasliman kathiran mazidin la yawmiddin. Oh my brothers, alhamdulillah, we are living in a time when we are blessed with the khilafah ala minhaj al nabuwa after hundreds of years, Allah has blessed us and he has returned us on the prophet, on the methodology of the prophet. Subhanallah, what a, what, what a lucky people we are. And you're still sitting at home doing what? It's because we're sitting at home. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated us because we left the jihad and we went back to our business and our farms. And we're happy living with the life of this world. Subhanallah, know that the hereafter is near. Know that the Yawm al Qiyamah is near. Know that you will be questioned and you will be asked, What did you do for your deen? Know that jihad is fardul ayn on all the Muslimin. So sitting at home is not going to save you. Because Allah Azza said in the Quran, Do you think you will be left alone and you will be, Allah will not check who has done jihad in his cause and who did not? Subhanallah, the words of the Quran are clear. You will not be saved, my brother. What are you living for? 50 years, 60 years in this dunya? And then where are you going to go? Well, what are you going to say on Yawm al Qiyamah? Don't you know that the Akhirah is real? Don't you know that Jannah is real? Don't you know that Jahannam is near? Where are you going to go for the eternity? Think about it, my brother, and wake up. For hundreds of years, the Ummah has been in torture, in oppression, in all kind of dhulum. And what have we been doing? We have been doing nothing. Remember that the victory comes from Allah. The victory doesn't come from the weapons of the kuffar or how many people we have or they have. Wallahi, they have all the weapons in the world, but they are not, be they are not being able to defeat us. And they will never be able to defeat us because we don't fear. We only fear Allah Azza wa Jal, while they fear us. They have khawf in their heart of the Mujahideen. We have no khawf. We have only khawf of Allah. And Yawm al Qiyamah, we will be asked what we did for this deen. Remember that Allah will give victory to his deen. You and I will be lucky if we are able to partake in the victory. Allah Azza wa Jal does not need us. Allah Azza wa Jal does not need his prophets. He will give victory to his deen. But we have to do our part so we save ourselves from the fitna, from the hellfire. So wake up, my brothers, and know that jihad is fard. Know that you have a khalifa. Know that hijra is fard on you for those who are able to make it. And, and those who are not be able to make it, you have to work, work where you are. You have to fight the mushrikeen and the kuffar near you. You cannot just sit at home and do nothing. Remember, the end of time is near. Soon the time will come when we will, inshallah, fight with Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam and the kuffar and the murtaddin will fight with the Dajjal and know that we will be victorious and they will be the losers and you will be the biggest losers if you're sitting at home and doing nothing. Wallahi, the victory comes from Allah. Remember in the battle of Badr, 300 Muslimin and 1000 kuffar, but who won? Think back to the time of the army of Jalut and Talut. Again, 300 Muslimin and 1,000 Kuffar, but Allah gave victory to those small group of Muslimin because they were on a Haq, they were on Tawheed, they were on Al-Jihad. So Allah gives victory. The Nasr and the Fath comes from Allah, not from us, not from anything. So remember that Allah will give victory to the Muslimin, and you need to make sure that you are part of it. Wallahi, my brothers, the time is short. Make your move, make a plan, do what Allah tells you to do. 
Don't you know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, he who does not wish for his, for his brother what he wishes for himself, he is not from us. Don't you know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, he who is not concerned about the ummah is not from us. Subhanallah, the words are clear. If you don't care about the Muslims in Burma, in Kashmir, in Philistine, in Africa, if you don't care about them, Wallahi, you're not from the Muslimin, you're not from the Mu'mineen, you're not from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because the words are clear. So it's time for you to wake up. Do you want to choose the life of this world? 50 years, 60 years of happiness, half of the time you're sleeping, and half of the time you're a slave of the dunya, you're a slave of the tawaghit, you're a slave of the murtaddin, or do you want to choose the akhirah? Where Allah has promised the mujahideen, the shuhada, the mu'mineen, jannatul firdaus al-a'la. Subhanallah, what beauty. This is waiting for us for eternity, where we'll have fun and enjoy. This is not the time, my brothers. This is not the time. This world is a test. If you pass the test, you will be there, inshallah. If you fail the test, do you know where you're going? You will be with the same people who are you with you, with you right now. The murtad, the kuffar, the mushrikeen. Wallahi, with all their weapons, with all the technology. Do you know what they fear the most? This car right here. Amaliyat istishadiyya. This is their worst fear. And they're not going to stop us. We will come to them from the right, from the left, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Wallahi, we will come to them from every side until they defeat, they're defeated. Until they submit and surrender to the Muslimin, to Al-Islam, with humiliation, degradation, and fear. Wallahi, Allah will give victory to this Ummah. So make sure you're part of this Ummah, Ya Ikhwan. Make sure you're part of this Ummah. May Allah guide you and us. Um, Well, um, I hope everybody noticed that chapter 9, verse 111 was quoted on the screen. You see how powerful this chap, uh, this verse, basically, how many of these youngsters fall for this deception, this lie, that they are selling their life in return of a void promise, a void promise from a God that says he is the master deceiver, by the way, if I may add. And yet they believe that master deceiver. Now, here is... I want to give a summary of what we've learned, NT, from this video alone. And thank you for sharing that clip with us. This gentleman was telling people that they need to get off their high horses and go fight, right? He was speaking to Muslims, actually. He was yep. telling them that they have a mandatory, he says, fardain, mandatory Fard requirement to go and fight. It's not an optional thing. Right. He told yep. them that this is the prophetic way, the, the way of the prophet. This is the straight way that gets him to heaven, to avoid hell, to avoid oppression. He mentioned oppression a number of times, by the way, in T. He talks yep. about being oppressed by the infidels, being yep. oppressed by this or that. So you notice how they can justify the cause so easily, by the way. They play with words. They play with the, with emotions. They use like simple yep. examples to show you that you are required now. And he mentioned you have to do it out of fear of God. If you fear God, if you obey God, you want to do what God commanded you, this is how you do it, right? Yep. And yep. it's about instilling fear 
in the hearts of the unbeliever that includes by the way the unbelievers in his mind includes muslims who are not willing to fight by the way that's it if well, you tell them right they're now they're hypocrites yeah. they're hypocrites Ch yeah, Nine, exactly seven, five says oh you prophet be harsh against the disbelievers and the hypocrite right right exactly three classes are mentioned in chapter nine chapter nine you can see everybody how important it is when it comes to that doctrine and of course if you were to tell him right now wait a minute man i know there are muslims in these buildings they're gonna go and blow up he's going well you know god ordained that for them and if they're not really good muslims how uh, well you know it's like it doesn't really matter and i you know it's kind of funny he talked about slavery that if you refuse to fight and give yourself up you're living as a slave under the oppression of what the infidels the hypocrites and yep like you set yourself free this way so that's interesting i mean uh nt um yep. how many of these things have you watched uh, brother because a lot of people are asking okay. you know they you, can't I'll stomach it obviously yeah. <laughs> right I'll, I'll tell you what happened okay so this was probably over a year of collecting material and it took almost a year to put the movie together, right? So I had to find time to do it. You know, there's just other things going on, and it's really hard to get involved. The biggest obstacle that I had um, as far as physical uh, was getting translations done. Um, it's, you got to understand, it's really hard to get people on board to do a translation for this type of caliber. Not because they couldn't do it, but look, the material is hard to get through. Right. It's it would be different if I said, hey, look, I have a movie. I need translation. It's a drama about, I don't know, anything else other than this. Yeah. More people will be more willing to do it and they can get through it. Asking somebody, look, you're going to be subjected to some really horrible things. You know, it makes people a little bit more reluctant to to want to even put themselves in that situation. And so I understand. I get it. I really do. But what really took the longest time to put this documentary together was sifting through the, all the material I have. I literally have terabytes of this footage at that quality, by the way. It's not third generation uh, generation pixelated video or anything like that. It's really a 1080p stuff. And I'll tell you what, it was really hard for me to get through some of the stuff because what I was sifting through, remember, I have to scan through the video to see is this usable or is it not usable? What bothered me the most when I got passed through all the beheadings, I mean, there's literally thousands of beheadings. The people are willing to be beheaded. They're saying, I deserve to be beheaded. Yes, this is Allah's grace on me. They, they say this in Arabic in the videos. So they're not fight. You would think that these people would say, no, you're not going to behead me. I'm going to fight you. No, nope, they're willing. They, they really believe they've done wrong and they're going to atone for this. What got me the most was the children. I saw. Right. I had a video where a lot and of I'm people mentioned that uh, seeing children also. Yeah. Yeah. What got me was was really crazy. Um, it's the children, because look, you and I, we we live a, somewhat a sheltered life here in the West. We don't really understand what's going on in in the East. I'll say, and how the cultures are just a culture, and how they view things differently, especially with right and wrong and good and evil. The children, oh my goodness, these children. I saw one video where, and I'm just going to say, they, they pay head of this guy, and they took his body, his carcass, and they chained it to a wall. What they did was they bent his shoulders inward, and they took his severed head and planted it on the back of his sh shoulders. That's not what got me, because I got past all that. What got me was is all these children ran up to the body and were slapping it and wiping their hands, going like this, and laughing. I didn't know what they were saying. So I had a friend of mine who was, uh, who was natively from Iraq. Um, his name was Hayden. And I showed him the video. I said, hey, Hayden, what are they saying here? He went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He freaked out. I was like, what? What? What are they saying? He said, NT, they're screaming and angry that they didn't get to kill this guy and behead him. They wanted a live guy to do this to. I was mm. like, what? Wow. Wow. Well Wow, brother. Well, we're approaching our uh, break. Let me read one verse uh, from the Bible to leave you guys with something to think about during the break. These guys offering themselves as ransom. But look what the scripture says about our Lord. It says the son of man came not to be served, but to serve mm -hmm. and to give his life 
as a ransom, ransom. for many. For many. Mark 10, 45. What, a, what an amazing contrast. Lokman, I will come back after the break and address your question. Thank you, everyone. Let's take a one-minute break right now. I don't hear you, Mike. Uh, we are back from our break. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, look, man, you have a question. You says, Al-Fadi, I have a question in, in terms of chapter 9, 111, when it says that this is a promise from the Torah and the gospel. Is right. that true? Of right. course not. Of course not. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what a Muslim will tell you, this is what my God says, that supposedly the Torah had a command for jihad, and also in the New Testament, there is a command for jihad. Therefore, Islam is just continuing along these lines. Now, it's so funny, by the way. They are going to take you to Joshua's story. They're going to take you to a phrase that Jesus says. He says, I did not come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. You say, aha, you see? That's the yep. command right there for jihad. Of course, I wouldn't believe that, brother. That's not what the Bible teaches. And therefore, they will tell you your Bible has been corrupted. That's why you don't find things like this. But... What what do you expect from them? They have to say faith, basically, right. and tell you that yeah. their book is the truth. I, I, I want to expound on that a little bit. Here, and I, try to, I try to explain to people, I say, look, think about it this way. I call Allah stolen valor. And you know what I mean by stolen valor. For those people who don't understand what stolen valor is, let me try to describe it. Have you ever seen those YouTube videos where young kids will go out and wear an army or a military fatigue with a tag that says John so-and-so, but yet you notice the clothes don't quite fit perfectly for them, and you say, wait a minute, something's up with these guys. And then a real military veteran will come up to him and say, hey, what rank were you? What company did you work for? What was the name of the platoon? And they can't answer the question? That's because they're posing as somebody they're not. That's called stolen valor. Allah does something similar with God. He has to do the stolen valor of God, and it only makes sense. Here's why. Think about it like this. If Allah did not do the stolen valor idea, would anybody take him seriously being the actual all God of beginning and end since the Torah? Since the Old Testament? No. They'd say, who's this new guy? Who's this new God? How can you say you're God when you're just coming on the scene on the 7th century? doesn't make sense right so it only makes sense to mimic and that is why the name of the documentary is called art of imposture it actually stands for the art of deception imposture is another word for deception that's what allah is doing because remember nothing is done unless the concept happens in one's mind for them to do something in other words when Allah says to the believer, you must do these things. As a matter of fact, when he says in chapter 59, verse 13, you as a believer are a greater terror than Allah. He's telling you that you need to punish them by your hands. It's not you doing it, but it's Allah doing it. 
Think about that for a moment. He's telling his believers to do something, but don't worry. It's not really you doing it. It's me, Allah, doing it. Allah didn't never did anything. It reminds me of a, an old-time friend of mine that I had back when I was a teenager. And I didn't realize what this quote-unquote friend of mine was doing. In my teenage days, I lived in quite of an interesting neighborhood. Did a lot of bad things. And I had one friend who would manipulate all our other friends to go do these particular things. And we're, I'm not saying we weren't innocent children. We were in gang, gang territory. So we would do gang things. And I noticed the leader. I'm not going to mention his name, but he would always get us to do his dirty work. Until one day I thought about it. And I said, wait a minute. Why is it that when we go do these things, he never does it with us? In other words, he was the mastermind in manipulating us. Allah was doing very something similar to his believers. Allah doesn't do anything, but he has you do it through your hands. It seems like Allah is trying to stand clear from any guilt and to say in the day of judgment when Jesus says, what has happened? He can say, I didn't do nothing. They had their free will. He's lying to his believers to get them to think that they don't have the responsibility that's on them for their own actions. Don't worry. It's not you that did it. It's me that does it through your hand. It's a bold-faced lie. You all have free will. You have to make that choice. Otherwise, there would be no reason for that word responsibility. And I think that's what Allah is doing. So he's stealing. He's doing the stolen valor. He's fooling these people. And these people are actually believing that he is the God of all things, ordaining them to do these actions. Good. Absolutely, brother. And, um, you know, here's another thing, of course. Um, uh, they, they, uh, not only Allah is, is doing this, but Allah also is making this claim that um, he is the one who is fighting uh, anyone using the hands of these believers, the jihadis. In other words, he's giving him comfort that don't worry, whatever yep. you do, Whenever you kill someone, whenever you do whatever you want to do with yourself, it is me who is doing this through you. You find this, of course, uh, in many places in the Quran. But also, uh, these people, these youngsters, are trying to escape from torment that yep. the Quran describes. Boiling right. liquids put in your bellies will melt everything in you. You'll yep. be whipped with iron. You know, uh, you yep. have to wear garments of fire. You know, chapter yep. 22, verse 19 talks about these things. Yep. Chapter yep. 18, verse 29 talks about things what God has yep. prepared for the wrongdoers, the evil right. doers, you know. Yep. So, uh, and, and of course, in chapter 9, verses 14 to 15, that's where he said, God says, engage in war. Engage yep. in war with them. Why? Allah will torment them by your hand. By your hand. That's yep. Right. Yep. So uh, let me expound a little bit on the punishment. Remember earlier when I said if you read the book, you're going to notice there's a theme going on here. If you're not following along what Allah says in the Sharia, then you are in the wrong, and you need to be punished. Not only that, he does he tell you that you need to be punished, but he describes it all the time. Why does he feel that he needs to describe these punishments in detail all the time? He's trying to paint a picture in your mind that says, this is going to be for you, for all eternity. Do you want that? Do you really want that? No, it's a fear tactic. It's threats. It's coercion. Let me read for you from chapter 44, verse 40 through 57. And let me, guys, think about what is being said here. It says this, surely the day of decision shall be their appointed time altogether. The day a master shall await nothing a client, and they shall not be helped, meaning you. You're not going to be helped. Save him up upon whom God has mercy. He is the almighty, the all-compassionate. Lo, the tree of Ezakum, which means the tree that springs out of the bottom of hell. There's a tree that actually comes out of hell, right? And it says, this is the food of the guilty. What? You're going to be eating something. What are you going to be eating, Allah? It says here, like molten copper bubbling in your belly as boiling water bubbles. Can you picture that? Imagine what's going on here in your mind. Take him and thrust him into the midst of hell. Then pour over their head the chastisement of boiling liquid. What is this liquid? Some people say it's water, but you know what? Boiling water is not going to boil your innards. 
molten brass and copper are going to do that. Taste. Surely thou art the mighty and noble. See, Allah is mocking you while he's, while the believers are pouring this down your throat in, in Jahannam. Come on, surely, right? You are thou the almighty. You're the one, the noble, right? This is what's, this is that concerning which you are doubting. Oh, so when a Christian talks to you about the Trinity, you're like, hmm, these guys might be telling me the truth about something. Are you doubting, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whoa, don't ever do that. Surely the god fearing shall be in a station secure. Talking about the believers are going to be away from all of this. They're secure from this. Among the gardens and fountains. Robed in silk and brocade, set face to face. Picture that. So they're in white robes looking at each other. Even so, and we shall espouse them to a wide eye horis. Oh, what? You get gifts. 72 virgins. Therein calling for every fruit secure. They shall not taste therein of death, save the first death. And he shall guard them against the chastisement of hell, a bounty from thy Lord, that is the my that is the mighty triumphant. That's it. Now that's the theme of the Quran. Now I can show you another verse that says this exact same thing over and over and over in different words. That's a fear tactic. That is the theme. So it's do what I say. If you don't, it's this for you. Don't be of those people who do these things that are against my law, which is the Sharia. Otherwise, you're going to be with them. This is their punishment, and it will be yours too if you are a hypocrite. That's the message of the Quran through and through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Agreed. And um, it's an unfortunate thing, really, that uh, this is what um, you know our Muslim friends go through, and this is uh, sometimes why. Uh, in my view, uh, those who capture the essence of this doctrine and are embarrassed about what it says, they're going to have to come up with ways to water it down or even reinterpret it because they, you know, they know what would happen if they were to admit it. Because if they admit it, that means they have to leave the faith or they want to really give themselves the perception that maybe there is a misinterpretation going on here. And therefore, yeah. that's not really what my religion teaches me to yeah. do today yeah two things go ahead go ahead, go ahead. well there's two things about the misinterpretation there's two reasons why they say that number one it's a war to, and it's a war to be won like the great coach vince lombardi of the green bay packers once coined winning is not uh, everything it's the only thing meaning even cheating is okay right but there's two things to be met to be met here Number one, not only are they trying to uh, uh, avoid hellfire, but they're also trying to like, find excuses not to do it. Oh, look, it's misinterpretation. It doesn't really say this because in the same verse of 9111, it says they, Allah purchases not only their souls, but their wells in their lives. They interpret, they say, well, as long as you pay for jihad, hey, I'm going to heaven. But it's still not guaranteed because it has to be guaranteed because if you finish the verse, it says, so they are killed, so they kill and are killed. See, they don't want to even look at the rest of the verse they're expounding on when it says, look, I can do jihad just with my money. That means supporting the war, supporting uh, the fight uh, of those who fight against Islam. They think that's jihad. Right, so they look for excuses. So it's 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 both. It's so I don't have to actually die. I pay with my wealth. Look, right. I've done jihad, right? And, and it really isn't if you read and if you keep reading the passage. So it's cherry picking, really, one verse without even finishing it. Yeah. And um, uh, one of the things we talked about, you and I, um, is that what will happen to the families of these youngsters who are committing an act of jihad why is it that they don't think about their families you want to elaborate a little bit more on that yeah okay so i don't know if you guys ever heard of this woman her name is um nadal that actually means the mother of the martyrs and you're not going to believe this this woman she said on television and you can find this on palwatch.org i guess that's it's, right that's uh, right yeah she actually says in as many go look look her name up on google um nadal 
She says publicly, if she had a hundred children, she would gladly sacrifice them for the cause of Allah. She's already sent three of her beloved children to martyrdom, and she's happy. When they have a martyrdom, they don't have funerals. They actually have parties. It's the craziest thing. They actually have parties when they send their children to do shahid. They party. They, and, they're not in mourning. They're really she not. Sent, she sent more than one, by the way. Yeah. Sent three. She sent three, and she said yeah. she'd send a hundred if she had a hundred. Yeah. Right. It's that exactly. crazy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, a secret. And it's not really a secret, but I'm going to tell you how propaganda works. When you see the Palestinians fighting against Israel on national TV, and then the Muslims go, oh, look, the IDF threw a canister and hit my baby in a carriage and, it, it, and injured my baby or killed my baby. And they go on national television and they say, look what Israel did to our children. Number one, think about this. Why are women bringing their children in baby carriages in the middle of a war, number one? You know what they're doing on the sidelines? They want their children to die because those children have not obtained any bad sin or bad deeds on their behalf. So on the day of Yom Kiyama, they have no bad deeds against them. So it's a loving act by a mother to send their children to martyrdom because they know they will guarantee paradise because there's nothing, there's no strikes against them. Right? You guys heard of Ian Hersey Ali talk about the, the, the angel that's on your right shoulder and on your left shoulder. One records your good deeds, one records your bad deeds. Well, guess what? When you're a child, that hasn't happened yet because you haven't reached the age of puberty or age of, uh, uh, what is it called, when you're responsible, responsibility. The age of, so, the age of accountability, yeah. Accountability. So if you don't have that, you have no good bad deeds against you. You don't have bad deeds against you. There's no reason for you to go to hell. So it's a loving act by Umm Nadal to send her children to do shaheed. It's a loving act to put your child and baby in baby carriages in the middle of a war zone between Israel and Palestinians to get injured or killed and have a party afterwards because they go into heaven. That's what's right. actually happening. And that's because the Quran in chapter 3, verse 169, for instance, as an example, says, and do not think that those who were killed for the, for the sake, sake of, of Allah, Allah dead. are dead. Nope. Right. Yet they are alive with their Lord, receiving yep. their provision, yep. rejoicing in Rejoice. what Allah has given them from his bounty. And they yep. receive the good news of those who did not follow them from behind Thank them, except fear on them, and they will not grieve. That's right. See? Yep. That's why that's why Omnidal will celebrate uh sending her three kids sadly to hell yep. actually because she not, thought she was not only them that to they have the intercession remember in the hadith where it talks about intercession for family members That's right. So she's get, right. she's getting it all, right? She's she makes it to heaven too because it was her children. Absolutely. So folks, here's what's going to happen. We're going to take another 1 minute break right now. When we come back Initially, I asked NT to show the trailer for the movie, which is about three minutes at the end. I'm going to ask him to show it right after our break because it seemed like things are going just fine. And it'll be good for you to watch the trailer. And then he and I will interact quickly before we close our live stream. Folks, I don't know if you're noticing, but I can tell that YouTube is diverting people away from us. And uh, that's not surprising to me at all. Yep. So hopefully, hopefully the video will stay in there for a <laughs> little bit more and you get to enjoy it. So let's go and take a one minute break and we will be back right after that.
All right, everyone, we're back uh, from our final break before we end this live stream. I'm hoping that you have enjoyed what you've been watching so far. Please, I encourage you, we have about 20 minutes left, but part of it will be consumed by the trailer for the movie itself. And then I would like for you to send us questions as fast as you can to see if we can have time to interact with you. So take the time right now, Inti, to tell people one more time about this movie because some people joined us late and then let's show the trailer and then we will close this live stream. Okay. Yeah, like I said earlier, this tool this movie is for you guys. This is a movie made for you to use as a tool to educate those who actually fight you on this. And I'm not talking about even Muslims. I'm talking about non-Muslims because it seems to us Remember, in the Quran, chapter 59, verse 14, it says, those people, meaning us Christians here, we're not, we're not um, together. We're divided. And the Muslims look at that and say, look, this is how you get at them. They're not, they're not together. They're divided. Their hearts are divided. That's because there are people who do not know. Remember, if you're trying to educate somebody on this topic and they have no idea what's going on with Islam or, or any of this, you can give them this movie as a tool because this will open everything up for them. Either A, they will never speak to you ever again because you showed them this movie, or B, they're going to come to you with a lot of questions and going to want to know more. But I will guarantee you this, you will get an emotional reaction from them. And that's what you want. You want a reaction. Whatever that reaction is, you need to get a reaction. You don't want somebody to say, eh. I've seen it. Doesn't really bother me. That hasn't happened yet. So this movie was made for a reaction. So use it, guys, as a tool to educate the world, educate your people, educate your loved ones, your friends, your family. So you don't have to do the talking. Let the film do the talking for you. Um, with that said, um, Alfadi, I wanted to expound on one more thing. Yes, please. Go ahead. Do that. And I want to make a quick comment before you show the uh, okay. trailer. Sure. The other thing is, is we're, we're told here in the West that when these guys do these kind of things, that it's education, that these people are not well educated. They're, they're dumb. Uh, they live in caves. Um, they wouldn't do this. But they, I've heard they do it because they're hungry and starving. I've heard all of the stories. I've heard all the excuses. I actually had a clip here. It was ready to play, but it's going to be a little too late. We'll save it for next time or something. But I have a guy doing Shahid, just like the clip I showed you, but he's a dentist in a dentist office office with state-of-the-art technology doing dentistry on people and he's talking about the same stuff that we're talking about just like the man in the other clip and actually goes in and does the operation himself blowing himself up so guys it's not about lack of education there are a lot of intelligent people that are actually doing this so don't get don't don't think that they're just dumb remember it's the fear that drives them go ahead Alfani. Absolutely. And I, I think everybody would agree with me when I say we're going to bring you back, brother. We're going to do more clips. We're going to try to do things that are very powerful like this. And one thing I want to point to all of you who will be watching the clip right now, which is basically the trailer, uh, the long trailer for the movie, which is about three minutes, give or take. Notice what the beginning the person was saying about the Quran. Please pay attention to what that person says because he's telling you the truth when it comes to how to look at the Quran, view the Quran, and interpret the Quran. Let's go ahead and show that. Okay. Okay, let me figure this. We are, <laughs> we believe in the Quran, okay? <laughs> really, we are Muslims, we believe in the Quran. The bottom line is, bottom line is, I believe in the Quran. If you think it's wrong or not wrong, this is your issue. I believe in all what is mentioned in the Quran, everything, all the verses, true or false, I believe in it. If you think it's false, then it's your problem. Okay? I'm not going to debate anything. The Quran is indebatable. The Quran is impeccable. No one can mess with the Quran. No one can question it. It's so simple. We believe in the Quran and 
we are not going to discuss or explain because we don't care what the explanation is. We believe in it as it is. We are not going to, to explain things. Why is this? Where is that? Not going to do that. We believe in it and it is a divine revelation and no, such, no one should question anything about it. It is the Quran. Don't question anything. Don't try to understand even. We don't want to understand. We believe in it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop it there <laughs> because the trailer is a little bit longer than that. Um, but just in case, the, the trust and safety team over at YouTube wants to say, oh, this is unacceptable. We had to cut it short. <laughs> right. So, right. So uh, people are, keep asking about where they can find it. Folks, we've been putting oh, yes. the link for that, you know, here for you. So please make sure you check the comments section. Uh, our amazing moderator has been doing this uh, all day long here, and I'll make sure I'll have a link to it on our Facebook as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, one of the things uh, uh, NT that are actually uh, troubling to me um, yep. is what the Quran teaches, what the Quran teaches as to who ought to be fought. And it's two groups, interestingly enough, the infidels in general and the hypocrites in particular. Who are the hypocrites? 973. Yeah, the hypocrites yep. are the Muslims who are refusing to fulfill the, their side of the bargain. Let me read something from right. chapter 33, verse 22. Yep, verse 22 says, and when the faithful, notice a description of those who are willing to sacrifice themselves, they're called the faithful. When well, the, the faithful believers. saw the parties, they said, this is what Allah and his messenger promised yep. uh, promised us. What? Yep. Victory over the, uh, the unbelievers. Victory yep. over those who are infidel. Verse 23, look what it says. Yep. Among the believing men, notice, believing. Didn't say among Muslim men, believe in men are those yep. who are true to the covenant they made with Allah. Notice there Thank is a you. covenant here that is made with Allah. Verse 24. I'm not reading the full verses, by the way. Verse 24. Yep. That Allah may reward the truthful. Allah may reward the truthful with their truth and torment who? The hypocrites. The hypocrites. And remember, folks, I said the hypocrites include the Muslims who are not willing to fulfill these commands. And right. you wonder why, you know, these uh, youngsters, the few, are willing to do what they did. You wonder yep. why 19 hijackers did what they did in September 11, not like 2,000, 19 only did it yep. because they truly believe that they are fulfilling their end of the covenant, the bargain. Yep. And here is the uh, the part that troubles me the most in chapter 33, verse 27. Look what it says. Speaking of Allah, yep. Yep. and he, Allah, this made you, the truthful, to inherit their land, the their land of, who? of the infidels, yep. their homes, their money, and a land which you had never set foot on. Meaning, right. you're going to keep on doing this and adding to your territories that's why you know uh, those radicals who wage wars like this these uh, groups that want to fight uh, you know hypocrites and infidels they tell you you know the islamic state the caliphate has no boundaries what does that mean meaning we keep on growing we keep right. on growing and, 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 and remember, adding the land a, that we have never set foot on there's a principle here remember if allah is going to be the Allah and taking the stolen valor of God, they say Allah owns everything. So the whole earth is his. You have no say. That's the principle behind it, right? So in a land that you have never set foot on, doesn't matter. 
Allah owns it. So go. It's your land now. Yep. Right. It's all about principle. Yep. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, um, you know, we still have a few minutes left, of course. Sure. But, um, um, oh, I, I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, when yes. it comes to the video, right, when it comes to the documentary, there are some links. I don't know. I'm, I'm not seeing the chat, so I'm not sure who's out there. But if I know Nataverse, she's putting the links in there. <laughs> um, yeah. She is. If um, the, the links, remember, there's going to be the ones from BitChute that can watch the stream. There's one from OK.RU, which is a better quality. You can watch these online. But if they're giving you the one from archive.org, that one do not watch as a stream. What you need to do is download it to your own computer. It's a big file. It's high definition. It's seven point something gig. But that's the file that you want to distribute as a hard copy. I'm also on that on that um, archive.org account, I'm going to soon be putting up a DVD copy up there for you guys to put on a 4.7 gig DVD. Yes, it is possible. A 120 minute DVD, and I got them, it's very possible to put a three hour movie on those and work on DVD players. So if you wanna pass this out to your aunts and uncles, like I said, I will be putting up a source for a DVD source that you guys can burn for your own DVDs if you want to pass it out wherever you are. I have like 40 of them already burnt. I'm sending them to Yusama. He doesn't know that yet. <laughs> but I have like 40 of them here and you guys will be able to uh, burn also your own copies on regular 4.7 DVD discs. Not dual layers, but the regular cheap ones. I want to make sure you guys don't have to spend a lot of money doing this, right? That's all right. I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Someone asked, you know, and I think you did allude to this ad way at the beginning of uh, this live stream about uh, almost uh, two hours ago. He says, when was the moment when you realized there is something terribly wrong and has to be addressed? <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, I thought these, I thought the Muslims were getting a bad rap with all the terrorism in the world. But uh, look, um, I, I, we all listen to Christian Prince and Sam Shimon and, and David Wood and Anthony Rogers and various other people, and we hear the arguments. And they're the same arguments over and over and over over the years. They've been doing it. I call this a shoebox religion. There's not anything that we haven't heard when it comes to rebuttals and arguments and debates with these guys. But here's one that caught me off guard when I was first learning about this. And it was about the backbone and rib thing where, you know, where men's sperm comes from. I thought, well, I'm a guy. Everybody knows where that comes from. Well, when the Quran, when it says in between backbone and rib, and not only that, it doesn't specify male or female. When I heard people on Pal Talk asking these questions, okay, show me where, you know, what is the functionality for the male testicle? Um, I was embarrassed to that question. I'm a guy. I, every, every guy knows that answer, right? We learned this in school, in grade school. And the Muslims couldn't answer the question. And I thought, no, there's something wrong here. And so I'll wait till the next Muslim. He'll answer the question. And he couldn't answer it. And the next one, and he couldn't answer it. They kept on dancing around this question. And I thought, oh, wow, something's horribly wrong here. Something is horribly wrong here. And then I said, I know how I can get a Muslim to answer this. I actually met a Muslim doctor. And I asked him the question, and you know what he said to me, guys? I asked him that very question, where, what is the functionality of the male testicle? He said to me, NT, at the end of the day, Allah is Allah. That's how he answered it. He avoided it as a medical doctor. He told me that, yeah, he kind of knows what's going on there, but he can't tell you because it would be going against Allah and his word. That opened up my eyes. That's the scientific miracles of the Quran. Allah is Allah. It is a miracle indeed, you know, when yep. you think about it this way. Well, um, we are uh, three minutes away from uh, concluding this live stream. Those of you who joined us, thank you so much. Thank you for those who gave through the super chat. We really appreciate you and appreciate all of your sacrifices. Thank you for moderators for sticking around for such a long time. Give us your feedback, especially moderators, if this format worked for such a long thing. Obviously, I do one hour, but this one I felt, I told NT, man, there is a lot of information, and I hate to, uh, to cut it short within one hour, but I'm taking a risk by doing it for two hours anyway. But nevertheless, 
it is what it is. It's kind of funny how you YouTube, know, you yeah. can tell, was intimidated yeah. by what yeah, actually, we're doing. I thought actually, I had I had a bet going that we were going to get shut down within a half hour. I failed. I can't believe. So it. you owe me money. You owe me money, right? Was it with yeah, me? Yeah. Or was it with somebody? <laughs> no, all the guys over. You know where. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. No, I mean you have a you have the right idea because uh, if they took down our promo, you can imagine, you know. And I wonder if this thing will stay anyway. So, well, yeah. Well, it's it's yet to be found. Actually, I mean, I mean to uh, we'll we'll discover and we'll we'll see what uh, what's going on. So, thank you everyone, of course, for your great sacrifices. And uh, brother, I want to give you the final say before we close. Anything else you want people to be aware about? you your videos your website anything that uh, you would like to address here well um not really i mean I, i've said everything i had to say uh get that movie out use it for your tool look you guys said earlier you wanted to make me famous on this no it's not about nt nt you don't even know who i am just use the tool and i promise you i will give you more material for your for, for when you're educating people that way, these people will not shut you down anymore. I promise I will. I, if you go to my BitChute account, there's going to be various, various videos there that you have never seen before that you can use to prove your cases. So I implore you to go there, take that material. It seems to be that uh, BitChute's not shutting down that account. So I think, uh, you know, praise God, we can use that. And um, just use it. Use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. Copy it, take it. It's not stealing. Take it, use it uh, for for your uh, your 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 own ways to uh, get people on board. We need people on board. We're very select, far and few doing this. As you, have you noticed, it's not the world with us. The world is against us. So we need more people to be educated on the topic. And remember what Usama Dakduk says in his lectures. He goes, "My people." have been usurped in this because they didn't know. It was a lack of knowledge of all this, right? And he's right. Exactly. Egypt and all these places were Christian. The apostle Paul evangelized the entire country of Syria. It used to be all Christian. And now there's less than how many percent now? I know. All about education. Exactly. So, so exactly. give it and give it to the world as much as you can. Absolutely. In fact... I would say if you study the history of how Islam entered into the Levant, Sham, or Damascus, you'll see yep. that the church played a role in that for lack yep. of understanding. So uh, may God Hosea help us. Absolutely. May God help us uh, to uh, uh, be in tone of his word, uh, be guided by his Holy Spirit, give us his wisdom, give us his guidance so that we can understand how to share the truth rather than to run out of fear and cooperate with the other side that does not share the light or the truth. Thank you everyone again for being here. And uh, thank you, of course, uh, NT for joining me, brother. I know it was a big step for you and I appreciate your courage. That's uh, my pleasure. inspiration to many. And I'm hoping that we, you and I can put together another such uh, powerful show like this with other clips from other topics maybe and uh, hopefully everyone will enjoy being with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, those who have sacrificed and gave us uh, through the uh, Super Chat. May the Lord bless you and uh, reward you richly. Take care, and we will see you on Sunday at, again, 5 p.m. Sunday, 5 p.m. Uh, New York Times, which is 10 p.m. UK time. We will have with us no other than our dear sister Khadija, and we will talk about a very important topic called apostasy in Islam. And we're going to call it live on the other side after you become an apostate, live on the other side. So hopefully you can join us. We will advertise for it, of course, by tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Take care.